Hello, this is the Trade Site Forex Market Preview and International Economic Data Roadmap, week beginning Sunday, the 9th of November 2014, and ending Friday 14th. Can you believe it's halfway through November already? Charts, as usual, brought to you by eSignal. This is a look at the dollar index daily chart. You can see that uh, pushed up again this week. I should point out that our seeker tool, which does the 1 through 13 counts, uh, there's a couple of different settings you can use on the tool. One of the options on the tool is what we call uh, recycle after 18 startup bars. And if I check that instead, what's interesting is we got a recycle back here in September that kind of gives us a different look at the count. And with that, we've now got a 13 sell signal and we bumped into the risk level and failed there uh, Thursday and Friday. So it's going to be interesting to see if that's the true signal here uh, on, the, uh, on the dollar index. Let's go through some of our major pairs. Here's the euro dollar. Um, broke to new lows this week. Here's the pound dollar. We'll talk about the ranges in a bit. Uh, again, to new lows for the recent times. Here's the Aussie dollar. Aussie dollar is interesting because here's the seeker. You got a 13 buy signal and it bounced on Friday. You also have a buy signal using the Comer on the daily chart here on the Aussie. So dual buy signals on the Australian dollar against the dollar here. Here's the New Zealand dollar. Here's one of the cross pairs, the pound yen. A little more stable week after that spike last week when Japan decided they were going to go to a QE program like the U.S. has been on for a while now. So those are the major pairs. Let's take a look at the intra-week action. This is 30-minute bars on the euro dollar. High to low for the week, about 220 pips. We will take that. Uh, reasonable. And we had some decent winners in the pound because of it. Euro was uh, not where most of our trades were this week. Uh, but you can see in the end we only lost about uh, 30 pips for the whole week, which isn't much. Here's a look at the pound dollar. And this one started out a lot slower. Uh, total range for the week here, though, was about 250 pips. Now we'll call it 240. Uh, but a couple of big days, and we had a couple of nice winners on the short side on the pound, both on Wednesday and then Thursday. So uh, no complaints there. Market did get a little erratic Friday during the unemployment number, non-farm payroll. That's where we go half size ahead of those numbers typically. So overall, it's a good week. We're back to full size, except for ahead of those big economic data. Uh, points and uh, a couple of big winners for the week. Nothing super spectacular yet, but nothing to complain about. All right, let's take a look at the week ahead and see what we got. We got the uh, China's CPI and PPI Sunday night, 8.30 p.m. Eastern time. We're, we're now past all the uh, time zone changes around the world, I believe, so no more of that settling and affecting the technicals for a while. Uh, Italian industrial production out of Europe. Centex investors' confidence out of Europe. Housing starts out of Canada. Current account out of Japan and bank lending out of Japan. We've got the NAB business confidence number out of Australia and the HPI. Uh, Japan's got the 30-year bond auction. Tuesday, consumer confidence. Economy watchers sentiment. J preliminary machine tool orders out of Japan. Got a French bank holiday on Monday. Be aware of that. New loans out of China somewhere during the week along with M2 money supply. They're not real specific about the date and time on those. Uh, remember that Tuesday is Veterans Day here in the U.S., so it is a bank holiday. Uh, so even though the stock market's open, the banks are not, and Forex pairs should be pretty tame. So we probably will not do calls. We will post levels, but we will not do calls uh, Monday going into Tuesday. Uh, let's see. We've got uh, the Westpac Consumer Sentiment out of Australia, tertiary industry activity out of Japan, along with their M2 money stock number, wage price index out of Australia. Going into Wednesday, German WPI. Uh, we've got uh, the UK's unemployment rate. We've got industrial production out of Europe. CB leading index out of the UK and a Bank of England uh, inflation report out of the UK. We've got wholesale inventories here in the US. I've uh, got a couple of Fed members speaking and whatnot. 10 year bond auction, 101 p.m. Not at 1, 101 p.m. Eastern Time. Uh, New Zealand's FPI and Business uh, Manufacturing Index, Japan's Core Machinery Orders and PPI, MI Inflation Index, uh, Inflation Expectations out of Australia. Um, we've got China's industrial production and fixed asset investment along with their retail sales going into Thursday. German final CPI, French CPI, and uh, Swiss PPI all going in the wee hours of uh, Thursday morning here in the U.S. Ten-year bond auction out of the U.K. The weekly unemployment, unemployment claims data out of the U.S. and jo the jolt job openings. Canada's Bank of Canada review. Crude oil inventories in the U.S. Thirty-year bond auction. The Fed budget balance number at 2 p.m. Eastern time. Thursday afternoon. And then on to the G20 meetings and Friday we've got Europe's uh, French and German preliminary GDP as well as Italy's. We've got uh, CPI and GDP data out of Europe. 
U.S. has retail sales, import prices, University of Michigan sentiment, business inventories, mortgage delinquencies, and natty gas all on Friday. That's pushed the date back from Thursday because of the holiday, bank holiday on Tuesday. So none of our big three in the U.S., no GDP number, no Fed to look at. We do have a holiday on Tuesday that's going to slow things down quite a bit. But other than that, we can pretty much be full size. I see nothing to be afraid of, and uh, we will trade as we usually do, be making calls in the lab. If you've not taken a trial of our services, uh, feel free to do so at any point in time. Have a great trading week.